Reporting from Arkham Asylum, this is Gotham Rogues. In this video we count down the 5 best Flash villains. Welcome to the first video on this channel that's not actually about Bat Rogues. No, for a change we're gonna take a short vacation from Gotham City and pay a visit to Central City or Keystone depending on which Flash and which era you prefer. Just like Batman, the Flash has a great and vast array of rogues. In fact even, the term rogues was popularized by Flash comics. While most Batman villains belong in a group insane Arkham Asylum inmates, most Flash villains are a part of the unofficial collective of Central City Keystone super criminals known as the Rogues. The Rogues are even more tightly knit than the Arkham Boys, frequently performing heists and hiding out from the law together. In this video I'm gonna count down the 5 best Flash villains. Of course this is just my opinion and I'll probably be leaving out several of your favorite rogues, so please feel free to write your own lists in the comments. Number 5. Abracadabra not really considered to be one of the rogues. Abracadabra is a time-traveling magician from the 64th century, a dystopian time when free will and any form of creative expression has been banned by tyrannical computerized government. Cadabra was a resistance leader and a champion of individuality, using his passion, magic tricks, as a form to express himself. He was eventually captured by the authorities and banished to our time, forbidden to return to the future ever again. To Kadabra though, this wasn't a punishment but a reward, as in this era no one could stop him from performing his magic acts. No one except for the Flash, of course. Abracadabra is not as harmless as he may sound. I say magic tricks, and maybe you think he pulls out a rabbit from a hat, or makes someone's watch disappear. No, he does things like this. Or this. And he doesn't even seem to care about the damage he causes either. Kadabra is just completely obsessed with putting on a so-called good show. He's pretty wacko, that's for sure, and a very entertaining character. You never really know what he's going to do, but it's sure to be something crazy. One interesting thing about Kadabra is that he doesn't use actual magic, but technology from his time that's so advanced that to our primitive minds it's like magic. He's also perhaps the Flash's most dangerous enemy, as there's almost nothing he can't do. Combine powers like that with the unhinged mind of Kadabra and you have one hell of a villain. Number 4. Captain Cold At first glance, Cold may seem like just a poor substitute for Mr. Freeze, but that's not the case at all. His real name is Leonard Snart, and he's the undisputable leader of the rogues. Whenever they get together in larger numbers, it's always Cold who takes command, because he's just a total alpha male badass. Coming from a broken home full of abuse, Snart became a career criminal and eventually crossed paths with the Flash. It was then that he decided he needed an advantage against the Scarlet Speedster. After being released from prison, Snart stole the blueprints for a cold gun and then actually put it together himself. Why a cold gun of all things, you ask? Well, the colder molecules get, the slower they move, and what better way to fight the Flash than by slowing him down? This makes Captain Cold a perfect enemy for the Scarlet Speedster, but that's not the only reason why he's so great. Cold is also a fascinating character. Snart is actually not an evil guy. Yes, he steals and even murders, but he has a strong moral code and set of rules that he refuses to break. He only kills if it's a do or die situation, and he never kills innocent civilians and bystanders. Any use of drugs within the rogues is also completely forbidden by him. Cold has also been known to work together with the Flash on occasion, fighting some greater evil, and even seems to have a strange sort of respect for the Scarlet Speedster that sometimes borders on friendship. He's a very interesting villain that you sometimes can't even quite call a villain. Cold is one of those characters who perfectly straddles the line between bad guy and anti-hero. Number 3. 
the reverse flash. Also known as Professor Zoom, Eobard Thawne, aka the Reverse Flash, is the Scarlet Speedster's arch nemesis. Just like Abracadabra, he's also a time traveler and not a member of the Rogues. Thawne hasn't traveled nearly as far as Kadabra though, as he's merely from the 25th century, a very different time than Kadabra's grim 64th century. The 25th was an enlightened era when the heroes of old, including the Flash, were still greatly remembered and admired. The Scarlet Speedster had one particularly devoted fan, namely Eobard Thawne. Thawne didn't only admire the Flash, he was obsessed with him, going to insane lengths to become him. Eobard found a way to artificially grant himself super speed, and even operated on his face to make himself identical to Barry Allen, the second and most iconic of the Flashes. Thawne then traveled back in time to finally get to meet his idol, but the strain of the journey messed up his mind, and then a shocking revelation caused him to completely snap. The true identity of the Flash's nemesis, Reverse Flash, had been lost to time. Curious, Thawne went to the Flash Museum to learn it, and was horrified to discover that it was him. The Reverse Flash was Eobard Thawne. After this, he went delusional and insane, enabling his transformation into the Reverse Flash in the first place. Thawne is just as fast as the Flash, and knows all of his secrets too. That's not very good when you're as insane as Eobard. Sometimes he believes himself to be the actual Flash, and will try to take his place. He has also attempted to make Alan's wife, Iris, his. But after realizing that he could never have her, Thawne murdered Iris. No one has caused the Scarlet Speedster so much pain and suffering as the Reverse Flash. There's also something that I just find very striking about a sinister looking clone of a superhero wearing an identical costume but with the wrong colors, like a twisted and dark mirror image. Number 2. The Trickster Maybe a bit of an odd choice to put in the number 2 slot, but I just really like Trickster. I'm of course talking about the original Trickster, James Jesse, and not that brat Axel Walker. I've never warmed up to that kid, even though he's been around for quite some time now. The Trickster is one of the Flash's most iconic villains and a staple member of the Rogues. James Jesse was a circus acrobat who cheated in his stunts by wearing a pair of air-walking shoes. Eventually he got bored by the circus scene and became a fantastical criminal who performed bizarre heists such as holding up an airplane. Due to his prankster-themed supervillain persona and gimmicks, a lot of people see Trickster as just a cheap Joker knockoff. The two definitely have a lot of similarities, but they're also quite different from one another. As his name implies, Jesse is more of a trickster as opposed to a Joker. He plays tricks on people, and is a sly, cunning con man. It's been established that he's the most gifted swindler in the entire DC universe, and Trickster's impressive feats include saving the world by fooling the all-powerful demon Neron into not destroying it, and conning Catwoman out of millions of dollars while also figuring out her true identity. That's pretty impressive considering how Selina is quite the skilled grifter herself. Like Catwoman, Trickster isn't really an evil villain, but more of a morally ambiguous thief who primarily looks out for himself, but will do the occasional selfless good deed. Jesse's also got a very delightful personality that's both grizzled and humorous at the same time. It's a shame he's been replaced by that kid walker, as no one will ever be able to fill Jesse's shoes. And now for the greatest Flash villain of them all, number 1, Mirror Master. Mirror Master is another title that's been held by two guys. The first was Sam Scudder, a small-time criminal who, while in prison, accidentally discovered a way to manipulate mirrors and any reflective surface. After being released from jail, Scudder perfected his new skill via various gadgets and became the Mirror Master, one of the Flash's deadliest foes. 
During DC's first mega-event arc, Crisis on Infinite Earths, Scudder was one of several characters to meet his final demise. A few years later, a new Mirror Master appeared, in the form of Evan McCulloch, a Scottish mercenary who was hired by the CIA and given Sam Scudder's old costume and gadgets. McCulloch quickly left his employers, however, and took the Mirror Master persona with him, becoming an enemy of the Flash instead, just like his predecessor. Both Mirror Masters have been a staple among the rogues, and two of the most recurring Flash foes. As opposed to the Trickster, in this case I actually prefer the second incarnation, Evan McCulloch, to the original. Scudder just hasn't really been all that developed beyond a generic gimmicky supervillain. McCulloch, on the other hand, has been given a tragic backstory full of unhappy events and established a distinct personality that's antisocial and bordering on psychotic. The only true family he's ever had is with the rogues, and that just makes him all the more interesting. But the real reason why Mirror Master gets the number one slot is because there's just something incredibly compelling about mirrors, and especially being able to manipulate them. Mirrors are fascinating in an odd way. They're an exact but backwards reflection of us, almost like a different world that's nearly identical but not quite. They're just something that's off. And here we have a guy who can literally enter this world and also trap people inside it. Imagine it, forever stuck in a strange backwards land. And Mirror Master can also do awesome things like this. If there's a cooler supervillain gimmick, then I don't know of it. So, there you have it. Those are the five greatest Flash villains in my opinion. Remember, Arkham Asylum awaits you in the next video.